Alright gangsters, I hope you're enjoying your Friday night. And uh, if you're a Linux user, uh, I'm sure you've heard the hype about Wayland, uh, you know, the new display protocol. And in this video, I will be showing you how you can write your own uh, Wayland client from scratch, uh, a fully functioning application window with uh, inputs and all. So uh, Wayland is a compositor. So what that means is that each application window has its own off-screen buffer that it renders to. So like, for example, um, right now I'm running Sway, which is kind of like i3 for uh, Wayland. So if I open up like two windows, each of these windows have their own uh, buffer somewhere in the memory. And these windows will render to that buffer and Wayland's job is then to take those buffers and composite them into a single image. So this whole, like everything you see in my monitor right now, that is the image that, that is a single image that Wayland produces. And it produces that from the various buffers that make its clients. So like Waybar, like the, uh, my status bar up here, that's a client, um, has its own little buffer, and uh, Wayland takes that buffer and then composites into a picture and uh, an image. And what, um, what Wayland also does, uh, Wayland really does two things. It composites images, and then it also um, it kind of does the reverse. It will organize inputs for each window. So when you press a key on your keyboard, uh, the kernel will take the kernel handles all hardware devices, and it'll process that and then spit out a uh, what's called an input event. And the kernel has no idea what windows are open. The kernel doesn't even know if you have windows. Um, the kernel doesn't care. So Wayland's job is to look at all the incoming input events and then kind of organize those into uh, and kind of send them into the different application windows. So let's say if I am like right now, if I press a key uh, A that goes to the uh, terminal over here, if I move my mouse over here and then I press A, the uh, input goes to that window. So Sway, my window manager, um, is kind of making that decision that if I press a key while my mouse is over here, the inputs go over here. If I press a key when my mouse is over here, the inputs go over here. And Wayland is very good at that. It just takes all the inputs and then organizes into the application windows. Um, very simple. Um, much, uh, much more minimal than compared to X. Um, th that's really the goal of Wayland is to replace the X server. And um, like, for example, if I open up HTOP right now, so these are all the processes running on, um, on my computer right now. And you'll notice that there's no Wayland server. You know, like when you run, like if you're running X right now, you'll look and you look through your processes, you'll find an X sort server. And Xorg was kind of like this big leviathan that has to like be a part of everything, you know. I don't even know how to explain Xorg. It was um, it's just it like it handles rendering APIs. It uh, it can render fonts, handles inputs. Um, is it Xorg is just a mess, and Wayland is so much cleaner. Uh, so you'll notice there is no Wayland server. Instead, what there is is Sway. Um, Sway is the Wayland server in this case, my window manager. Um, Wayland isn't something that actively runs in the background. Wayland is more of a library of functions that provide a way for the Wayland server, in this case Sway, to talk to Wayland clients, which in my case would be um, these two windows I have open. So the clients would be uh, these uh, instances of Kitty on my terminal and these are in communication with the Wayland server.
So as far as like communication between the client and the server, it's a lot like how um kind of like in networking, like clients and servers, like um you have there's this thing called the wire, which is essentially the communication channel that Wayland uses, and when a client calls a function, so if I'm writing a client and I call a Wayland function, that's called a request. And it's basically you request something from the server. And it's the server's job to listen for those requests. Now, on the uh, flip side, uh, there's what's called an event, which the client listens for from the server. So the servers will send events to the clients. Um, events a lot of times will be like, uh, you know, like a close the window event, like your uh, window manager wants the window closed. Or maybe it's a resize event, uh, something like that. And um, that's kind of like the basic format of Wayland. And the main way to handle this is what's called listeners. So like every object in Wayland has this uh, listener struct that you kind of fill with uh, function pointers. So you kind of like you'll give the server your um, a list of function pointers and the server will say like oh uh this function pointer when i want to send this event to the client i'll then call this client's po function pointer so that's kind of like the main um the main structure of wayland and I so as always pull up that documentation can't get very far without it uh you'll need um two different headers uh wayland client core.h and wayland client protocol.h you can find these in a uh, user slash include um, should come with Wayland. I think it might be like a development package, but um, yeah, let's uh, start writing some code. So uh, let's uh, let's open up a file uh, w.c and uh, let's open up some other terminals and um, yeah, let's pull up an h top. Uh, let's use this one to compile so let's um the first thing we'll need to do is uh, insert mode first thing we'll need to do is include wayland client.h since we are writing a client if you're writing a server you be using wayland server.h but um then we'll need uh let's include some Standard libraries, so standard lib, standard int, and uh, let's go standard IO. Never hurt to have. And then our main function, and then we'll return zero on success. You know, basic C, and then the first thing we'll need to do is open up a Wayland display. So let's say we have structure dis oh, WL display. <coughs> if I can type. And that will, um, what was the function for that? I think it's connect. Yeah. WL display connect and I want you to pass a null to that and what this does is basically look for an active uh, Wayland server so when I call this function it'll look for my Wayland server which is going to be sway and then um, return a um, the display kind of represents the connection to that server so on success this should not return um, it should not return zero. So let's say that if it does, we'll return negative one. And then we'll write this. And then you'll need to link with Wayland client. And we uh, return zero. It's also good practice to 
disconnect your display when you're done with it you know um, always get used to cleaning up uh, objects when you're done using it right, before I go any further um, it should probably increase the uh, font size a bit and then the next uh, the next component we'll need is a registry so the registry is this object that's um <clears throat> I'd say it, it kind of acts as like the mailbox for most of the information coming in from the server so we'll just create WL registry uh, reg and let's we'll get that through the display so the display obviously has a uh, it's the connection between the client and the server and we'll get registry and then next thing we'll need uh, is to um, get the listener so if I go back to the documentation uh, what is it called uh, duo registry listener here we go so this is the uh, listener for the registry object and it has two functions so we have this global and this global remove so we need to write two functions um where's the return type void so void and let's just say reg globe and that will take so we have a void data struct for the registry uh, we'll have a name an interface and then a version and that is our first function and then our second function I think is the same for the most part we just this is our global remove so the first function what that's gonna do is tell us uh, what globals we'll need so these are gonna be things that are consistent between both the server and the client and the global remove just tells us when those globals no longer is exist so this is all information just coming from the server as the server is kind of like the boss um, so we need a registry again and I believe it'll be just the name am I right? yeah and we're not actually going to use this function this is the one we're ca we care about and then let's shove this all into a listener. So we have global equals reg globe and then global remove equals reg globe remove. And that should be good. Wait, shit, this is a struct I don't need. Semicolons. <clears throat> so now I can WO registry add listener. And I think, what's the parameters on that? Yeah, here we go. It's just the registry, the listener, and void. So we give it reg, we'll give it, uh, oh shit, we forgot to name this, reg list, will be kind of important, and then we won't pass anything to it, uh, just null, and that should be good for our listener, um, let's, uh, let's see something fun, let's, uh, 
every time this gets called, let's print out the name. So percent u slash n. Let's go to the name. And uh, we have one more function we need to add. Uh, WL display round trip. And this just tells the server that we are single to mingle and that we are looking for some data. So now if I send that in, as you can see, we get all of these uh, global sent to us. Uh, we're not gonna use all of them. We're only gonna really use like maybe like three or four, um, maybe five, but uh, now we can move on to I'd say probably one of the most important steps, and that is the surface. So the Wayland surface is kind of just like what you're looking at right here. All this is a Wayland surface. It's the object that represents the um, the actual like pixel data themselves. You know, that's what gets composited into the image. So to do that, we need before we can create a surface we need a handle to the compositor itself. Now the compositor lives in the server, but we need to access it to create a, uh, a surface. So we'll go if, and then string compare, and this little interface um, int f thing right here, that is the name of the global, uh, the server is trying to send to us. So we'll say, if that is equal to um, we're looking for a compositor, so wl compositor interface dot name, which um, this is kind of just like a constant defined by the uh, Whalen header that just represents the name of the globe we're looking for. So we'll need the to define the actual compositor so wl compositor if I can spell comp and then we'll say down here um, if the server turns the uh, compositor global just say compositor equals wl registry bind and we'll go reg um, Fuck, what's after reg? A uh, name. We'll give it the name. So, uh, by the way, uh, what these numbers really mean is that each uh, global object has like its own unique name. Uh, so, that's just what the numbers mean. Uh, just so you can easily identify them. And then <laughs> we'll give it the compositor interface to just let, it n let the function know that it's dealing with a compositor. And then we'll give it version four. Um, it's just from the book I read. Uh, by the way, WaylandBook.net, I believe. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, great read. Um, kind of made, made by the same guy who made Sway. So I'd say if you enjoy this, uh, check that out. Definitely check that out. Uh, great. Uh, a great little uh, online book. But uh, yeah, this will um, set our compositor global. So now if we write this, and it should compile with no errors. Uh, oh, uh, what am I missing? Oh yeah, string compare. I was like, why, is, why do I need string.h? Yeah, so no issues there. So after the compositor, we'll go struct wl uh, surface. And by the way, I find it weird that Wayland uh, doesn't type define any of their structs. Um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I can see why they wouldn't want to do that, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of just used to uh, not having to call like actually use the struct uh, keyword, but um yeah we'll say then surface equals wl compositor 
uh, what is it? Create surface, and we'll get the compositor. And then, as always, we need to clean up at the end. So, wl surface destroy, and we'll destroy the surface. Now the next step I'd say is probably the uh, most important. Um, I th what did I say about the surface? Who fucking cares? So struct wl buffer. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, Wayland, what makes it a compositor is that <coughs> each uh, window has its own um, off-screen buffer somewhere in the memory. And what Wayland does is it takes those buffers and composites into an image. So each surface, when every time you send a frame to the server, the surface is the surface has a buffer. So the surface says, "Hey, I'm ready to be rendered. Use this buffer to render me." Um, so we'll create a buffer, and the process of creating a buffer. Is a bit strange because we have to allocate shared memory so um, and I, I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video but Wayland does not actually it is not a rendering API it uh, it composites an image but it doesn't do any of the actual like rendering functions so like like xorg x11 had all these weird uh, like 80s primitives that it had lying around that you could render. But um, as far as Wayland, it expects you to bring your own rendering API. So um, whether you're using like Cairo or maybe like GTK, which is built on top of Cairo, or if you're doing something like really performance heavy, um, the new Vulkan API is great. I'd probably say Vulkan is probably like your best, the best rendering API as of right now. Um, it's portable, it's uh, API agnostic, so regardless of if you're running X11 or Wayland, or you're on Windows, or you're on Mac, um, that was a big controversy with the Mac Vulkan stuff, uh, Vulkan doesn't really care. Vulkan functions the exact same way. Uh, it's, it's a very verbose API, but... Um, I'd say if you really want to get the most ever out of rendering, uh, Vulkan's a good way to go. But but enough of Vulkan. Uh, what we'll need to do is create a some shared memory. So what is it? N thirty two. I think that is the uh, standard file descriptor. Uh, so we'll say alk shared memory, and we'll also want to create a shared memory struct so we'll just call it let's just call it shim and we'll give it a size so we'll say u in 64t size and the first thing we'll need to do uh the weird thing about allocating shared memory uh you have to make a system call and the system call expects you to name it. And uh, before we do that, let's get a couple of, a couple of some more headers in. Uh, this is why I don't really like this part because I don't really like bringing in extra header headers. But uh, we'll need function control f control uh, dot h. We'll need um, what is it sys slash mman.h I believe and then that should not be capital sys it's not sus sys dot stat dot h and uh, there is another one uh, I'll, I'll think about oh yeah uni standard let's put that up here actually let's go here this, ki this is kind of a big one uni standard dot h um yeah and then so first we'll have to create a name so a name and actually let's let's make this an array 
so then we'll say uh, name zero equals dot slash no it's other slash so um kind of like how files on your computer always every directory has a slash in front of it um same thing with allocating shared memory because how the operating system works is it um <clears throat> the kernel will allocate things in terms of pages and these pages are treated like files so you know how they say that on unix everything's a file well like everything's a file so then we'll need to give it some random bullshit name so we'll just say let's start at one since we already named the first character let's say for i is less than six i plus plus And we'll just say name i equals brand. So let's go rand and 23 plus, I believe, ASCII 2 a starts at 97. Um, this, will this will just give us a bunch of random letters. And then after that, we'll say name. Actually, it'll make more sense to put it up here. So the name seven equals null. It has to be null terminated. All right, so now we have this random name for our uh, file. So to actually allocate that memory, uh, let's create in 32t I just realized this should, should not be a pointer so in 32t file descriptor equals and then we'll share memory open uh, I think this is one of the uh, and then F control or maybe sysman whatever um, so we'll give it our name so our name of the file we're allocating and then we'll have to give it some flags so we'll say O read write uh, o create and then o exclusive uh, might be another one I'm missing and then we'll say i no s yeah shit s I w user so it can be written by the user and then read by the user and then it can be written by others and then be read by others we'll unlink it so we'll just say this name is no longer used um, and then we have to truncate it so f truncate and we'll just give our file description and then the size we're truncating it to and then that should be good and then we can say have at it and this should compile I am what how do I misspell it? It's just F control. What the fuck was it called? Man, I really hate this. Have control with an N. Um so yeah, this should be uh Yeah, now it compiles. So Let's just create a function, and I'm gonna call this um, just let's just go void resize because we'll need to call this every time we resize the window. And uh, one more global since um, things aren't layered enough, we'll need an actual handle to the uh, memory, the an actual pointer to the memory. 
So we'll just call it Pix. Um, let's just call it Pixel. I think that sounds looks cooler. But um, yes. Yeah, so the buffer it represents the memory, but it's not the actual pointer to that memory. So let's keep our um, let's keep our pointer pointers here, and then we'll say we have a file descriptor which will allocate and then what size should we give it oh we'll need uh, important tip for the future we'll have a width and a height so we can define these later actually let's just define them now fuck let's go 200 by 100 I think that's a uh, good little height. So we'll just say width times height times four because um, each pixel each pixel will be four bytes. You know, RGB and then A. Um, so and we'll say offset of zero with a size of width times height times four, and we'll say protected read. Protected rights, and then what is it? Map shared, and then our file descriptor. So that will say we are mapping this uh, onto the file we opened, and then we'll say zero. Uh, I th I think that's the uh, correct order of doing things. Um. Oh shit. There we go. So then, after that, fuck, we need to create a pool. So a pool of memory. God, I am tired. WL pool. And then we'll say WL shared memory create pool from our shared memory so we'll give it that plus our file descriptor of where to uh, allocate it from and then of course you can't forget about the size and if your head isn't hurting yet it will so now wl shared memory pool create buffer and what is so wl share memory pool create all right here's that mess so we'll need the pool and let's see it goes pool offset which is zero and width heights width times heights times four which is the stride no the stride is just, um, yeah, hold on. We're getting the stride, right? Uh, yeah, stride, not size. So we don't need the height. We just need the width times four since that is the um, stride. And then we'll say the format is ARGB WL ARGB 888 and did I miss anything? no and now we can destroy that pool since now that we have the buffer allocated uh, it is no longer in use so pool destroy and goodbye but wait I uh this is shim formats so now after all of this mess we can get rid of that nasty file descriptor we had to rummage for and now we have our buffer um and as always at the very end you want to clean this up so let's say if 
buffer and then wl dis buffer destroy always good practice all right ninth dumb mistake of the night uh we need this to also be shim so now what's wayland moment ah oh, fuck got an eight there we go all right uh if you've made it this far congratulations um my head is already throbbing but uh you might be wondering when do we actually get to see the window you know we've kind of just been uh writing all this uh code when do i actually get to like see something on the screen well the next step is uh it's kind of a weird step it's the xdg shell the cross desktop group shell and this is just a small library that allows us to kind of kind of interface with the windows uh, specifically the window manager it's just this is just like I guess like kind of like a standard library for window managers basically but I've only ever seen it used with Wayland uh, I think it's designed specifically for Wayland I'm pretty sure it's made by the same guy Christian Hogsberg or whatever but um yeah the weird thing about xgg shell is that we have to generate the code ourselves. so this isn't like a library we link with uh through the Wayland dev package, you should have a program called Wayland Scanner, and we'll use that to generate our code. So let's go Wayland Scanner private code, and then we can find this in user slash share slash Wayland. Is there only one Wayland? Wayland protocols. And then what's in there? Uh, we'll need stable, and then xdg shell. And yeah, there's only one thing in there. And then we'll put that in XDG shell protocol. Is that how you spell protocol? Yeah, I, I hope that's how you spell protocol. And uh, yeah, it's right there, protocol. And then there we go. Uh, that's our C file that will compile with our code. And then same exact thing, but we'll go client header <coughs> ah shit yeah client header and let's put this in xtg shell client protocol dot h so for the next step you'll want to make sure you include the uh xdg header and then you'll um We'll need three objects from the uh, XDG shell. We'll need the uh, shell itself, which will be called uh, XDG window manager base, and we'll just call it shell. And then we'll also need, uh, so, and this is kind of just like, I guess, I don't know, it's just kind of like this general struct that we'll be calling. It doesn't, I think it's kind of useless, it doesn't have much functionality, but I'm sure it does something that I'm not aware of. And then we'll create our top level. Now the top level is, uh, this is, this is really what we're looking for. The top level is essentially what, what we'd consider a window. So uh, there's two different types of windows defined within the uh, cross desktop group. There are top levels, which are these windows we're looking at right here. And then there are pop-ups, which are kind of like, like they act like windows, but uh, they don't have the same functionality. So we'll, um, we'll need those two things. And then we'll also need a surface. So if we go down here, uh, just like the Wayland surface, we'll need an XDG surface. And uh, let's just call it X surface. Um, why we need this? I don't know, but um, this is, it pretty much does the ex exact same thing the Wayland surface does, but represents it from the XDG shell. So we'll go 
xdg window manager base get surface and then we'll give it the shell and we'll also want to give it our uh, Wayland surface so now we'll want to create more uh, functions for our listeners so uh, we're not using this let's go nvim Wayland slash xdg protocol shell uh, we'll need the client for the header and then make this more readable highlight comment return foreground equals two there we go and we'll want to look for the listener the surface listener here we go so I believe it only has one function which is the configure function so let's say let's put it right here let's go void x surface conf and then every one of them has a data and I bet it has without even looking a uh, xdg surface structure and what else does it have um, it has a serial and before I forget let's just create our listener right here so xdg surface listener And let's call it x surface list equals dot configure x surface conf. And I don't need that semicolon. All right, here we go. That is our struct. Now to configure this, we'll need uh, we'll go xdg surface ac configure which does most of the heavy lifting for us and we'll just pass that serial along and then this is when we actually start uh, rendering stuff so we'll say uh, rendering is not the right word uh, setting stuff up to uh, to the screen so we'll say if the pixel hasn't been um, initialize so if it's zero we'll just call our resize function and then uh, let's we'll also on top of resize we'll have a draw function and there is nothing to draw yet but when there is this is the first time this will get called so we'll say draw so Wayland surface attach buffer and the buffer will so we're gonna go surface and we'll give it our buffer and then zero zero um fuck what does what does it even do slash wayland surface attach uh yeah that's just our x and y offsets but we uh we don't really care where it goes we're just gonna attach it anywhere since sway will just put it where it wants it to go and then we'll damage our surface so this just tells us damage just means you you tell the server this is what you have to draw so um usually like if you're doing something over multiple frames and you don't want to draw everything every single frame uh and this is this comes in handy a lot in like toolkits like if you just have like a ui and only like when you press buttons do things change it makes sense that you only render those parts of the screen you don't have to render the entire thing all over again so we'll go surface and damage and then we'll give our surface and then we'll give our uh, xy coordinates which will be zero zero 
and then we'll be damaging an area of our width and height. And now we send our surface to the uh, Wayland server to be composited. So this is the great, uh, this is probably the most important function being called in this whole uh, thing. We're sending our surface in. So we are committing our surface, kind of like a git commit, we're telling the server, all right, we are done rendering, we're done drawing, it's yours. And this is to make sure that, because the whole philosophy of Wayland is like, we don't want to render an imperfect, uh, an imperfect frame. So every frame is only rendered when the client says that, okay, we're committed where the surface is good so um th that's just a th i think that's really what makes wayland like a great api but uh yeah that is going to be the first time we um actually uh render something to the screen or gr have something appear and we'll need the top level so if we go back down here Let's add our uh, listener, so xdg surface add listener, we'll go x surface and x surface list and zero. And yeah, there we go. So yeah, before I do anything, let's make sure I haven't done anything dumb and it compiles. I wrote that right. Yeah. Uh, shit. Hopefully that's not the only thing. Fuck. Okay. Um, get XDG surface. Almost there. All right, so the underscore buffer goes on the damage function, not the attach function, which I think is kind of dumb since like on the attach function, you're explicitly attaching this buffer to the surface, yet on the damage function, you're implicitly damaging the buffer that's attached to the surface. But that's just me. But it compiles. I um, wonder if we might see anything. Let's run it. And it seg faults because we probably haven't, um, we have not set up our window manager base yet. I uh, haven't set up this globals. But top equals xdg surface get top level and then we'll just reference our surface and now we need the uh, top level listener functions so let's go right here so top level listener and <clears throat> yeah just like the um, surface it only has one uh one function so we'll call it um let's call this void top conf void data and struct xdg top level top and what i see a width and a height And there was something else. This thing that we'll never use. A WL states. Maybe it's useful, but I just haven't gotten there. And so let's create our listener struct WL. XDG 
top level listener and then top list equals dot configure equals top conf and I will not put a semicolon so now we have our top level listener so now we can xdg top level add listener top and top list zero and that should compile <sighs> what did I do Got data in thirty-two and thirty-two. Huh. What is it saying? Incompatible pointer types. What? Configure data top level. Oh. It's a uh, array, not a states. There we go. Actually, there is a second top level function called close. So void top close void data struct xdg top level top and it gets a yeah that's all it has this is important when we want to close the window um, but we're not we're not that far advanced yet so dot close equals top close all right so now the um, before we start setting things up, I want to make sure we get our globals in. So I've uh, I've kind of been not doing that. So let's uh let's just copy this shit. So copy. I know. Vim with mouse. Cringe. And then we'll just say. We, we also need one for a shared memory. That's how we get that. So we'll say shared memory, registry bind, reg name, shim, and that will be version one. I think, yeah, the compositor is the only like non-version one thing you'll use. And then we'll have to copy that again for our xdg window manager base interface shell and that should give us our uh, shell Oh, but before we do anything important, uh, I forgot we we gotta play ping pong. Um, yeah. So we'll all we'll say is I think th this is just this is why I think the uh, the wm underscore base thing is kind of dumb. We need to. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a second. We'll have to play ping pong. Ping. Here we go. Shipping, and then got a void data as always, and then a struct XDG window manager base shell. And then what was that? Uint thirty two T serial. 
and the only function we're going to be calling is xdg or is it pong pong somewhere somewhere yeah base pong i don't know why um we do we basically whenever this gets called we have to hit it back so xdg window manager base pong and we'll just say shell serial um that's the only two yeah shell and serial and now we create our listener i know wait why we're doing this i don't know Shipping. So now we can add that listener to make sure we play ping pong. Greg, no, that's not it. It's um, what's a listener? It's a uh, shell and shell list. Zero and I think the only other thing we need to do is add a couple more things to our top level xdg top level set and what is it set title top level what can we set user data we don't care about user data parent title yeah all right um set title and just top what are the arguments top level and yeah it's just a title let's just say wayland clients and now so wl surface commit and If I haven't angered the gods, this will compile, which it does. Now that everything compiles and doesn't segfault, uh, I guess that's a win. We can say while wl display dispatch disp, and we won't do anything. We'll just be in that loop. And there is our window. Uh, this is our Wayland client, as you can see. Uh, when I, uh, if you look up here in my status bar, that is our title. And there's nothing in it since we haven't drawn anything. But uh, yeah, let's let's put something in there. Um, let's find this. What we call it W. This would be a lot helpful if I can see. Uh, www. Okay, here it is. We have to manually kill it. Th this is why I kind of left H top open, since I knew that um, there there's no way we can actually like tell the client to close. Uh, we're not that advanced yet, so we have to manually terminate the program. But um, yeah, let's put something inside it. Let's let's uh, let's just make it black. Let's go basic. Let's just say mem set pixel uh 250 no that was it that makes it white yeah 255 and how many bytes is that width times height times four now we write it and that is our little 100 by 200 square um yeah and uh that's how you manually render pixels and that's how you open a uh, Wayland client but there's an issue so if I bring this out as you can see it doesn't resize it just doesn't play nice um yeah it's just it's kind of messy there's no defined borders it's just like it renders its little 
100 by 200 square and that's it it doesn't play with any of the windows at all and it doesn't even close when i try to close it so we have to kill it we have to uh kill our child so uh, before we go any further let's um let's clean some stuff up let's uh let's get rid of let's make sure we destroy our shit if Neovim, Jesus Christ, if Neovim doesn't kill me, uh, we'll go XDG top level destroy. Let's get rid of that, clean that up. And then we'll need to destroy our XDG surface. And uh, we'll actually start. So before we. Uh, train our windows to close on command. Let's um, let's set up some uh frame rendering. So right now it only renders uh when we open the window, but let's get it to render when we actually like every frame. So uh, you know like how normal programs operate. So let me just shove this in since we're only ever going to call this when we draw so uh, let's see we'll need to make a callback so if we create our callback objects so wl callback cb equals wl surface is it, is it surface frame or frame surface why am I highlighting that? All right. Surface frame. Yeah, it's surface frame. And that will give us our callback object. And then we'll have to create a callback function. So let's put it up here. We'll need to look for a WL callback listener, which has a single uh, a single function, which is called done. But we're going to call it frame new, because that is what we're doing. We're getting a new frame. So we'll get void data, as always, and then a struct WL callback cb and i believe i saw un32 in there which was our what was it un32 oh no i'm just dumb oh yeah wait no un32 i'm not dumb well i am but and what are we gonna put in this i don't know we already used data oh let's just call it a for whatever and then this is where we get our new frame. So we'll um, need to call our draw function. And we'll actually first we'll need to destroy our callback. So wl callback destroy since we kind of have to reset it. And then we'll have to recreate our callback. So callback equals WL surface frame. Now this is where it gets weird because we're gonna have to put the listener in its own function. So go struct WL callback listener cb list equals it was just done oh no we just we just need to define it for now so wl callback add listener and then callback and callback list zero and now we can actually define our 
listener struct wl callback listener cb list equals done equals frame new and that is our listener and we'll also have to put it down here so wl callback listener add listener and we're adding cb and cb underscore list and for the love of god compile all right everything looks good um so now if we run this uh the only thing you'll notice is actually it's not even using that much more cpu uh oh but it still doesn't close when i want it to so let's do something cool uh, just to show off well, let's have this fade in and out so let's um let's say we have this variable u went a t c and we don't have to set it and every frame let's um let's increment c and let's have c be what we set our memory to so now if i compile you can see it'll fade in and then it'll fade in and it'll do this every frame and another point about wayland just look how smooth this is like i don't think i've ever seen this smooth with x it's just like the transparency just like nothing nothing beats this but yeah now this is a uh, kind of flexing our uh, our new uh, frame draw call terminated so that's all fun but um let's uh let's get that window clo to close so um let's create another unit close variable and let's say so we had a uh, let's just say when this function happens we'll just say close equals one and now with our dispatch uh little loop we'll say if close break and then if we write this and compile it and I press alt w the window closes now to make it uh, size properly that's uh, that's also pretty easy so uh, if I go right here, we'll have to rename this so it doesn't conflict with our global width and height. We'll say if width, we'll just say if width, or or, 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 who gives a fuck. Uh, we'll say if either of those will return, because we don't want to mess with a zero width and height and then we'll say if all right this will have to be our new width and new height and let's let's go and uh, I think that's what I traditionally use and then we'll say if width is not equal to the new width or or height is not equal to the new height we can tell uh we can tell it got resized so then we'll memory mun map so mun map our pixels which is the size of width times height times four and then we'll say width equals new width height equals new height and then we'll resize now if we compile this 
you can see we now fill up the entire window and we can that doesn't look pretty uh, I think I'm missing a draw call somewhere um, yeah for some reason it doesn't look as smooth but uh yeah now we can resize our window and it closes all right, so I just checked over, and the window, um, it does appear smooth when I am not recording. So I believe this is just my recording software, but um, when it's not rolling, uh, window looks smooth as butter. So you kind of just have to trust me on that. But yeah, um, now the last thing I need to show you are inputs, uh, which are pretty important when you're handling uh, desktop applications. So uh, what we'll need, we'll need one more global, we'll need a seat. So let's go struct WL seat, seat. And we'll also need a keyboard. So let's, let's just do keyboard inputs. Um, don't feel like messing with the mouse today. So WL keyboard KB, uh, this should be good. So we'll go down here and let's copy this because I am lazy. And we'll paste it and we'll say seats interface and then seats. And this should give us a seat at the uh, kernel. Uh, basically, this just um, I'm not really confident on how uh, sessions and seats work, but this kind of just like this this lets us take in inputs. Um, yeah, and then we'll need the listener. So uh, get our Wayland documentation. So seat listener uh, two functions I believe capabilities and name um, we're not going to use this uh, we just care about capabilities since that's how we get our keyboard so we'll say <coughs> let's go uh, if I don't die beforehand void seats uh, cap and without even looking I know we have a data and a seats and we'll also need so we have data C and then just an unsigned you went 32 and that is our cat capabilities and then we'll need our name, so seat name, which we will never use. Struct WL seats. Seats. And I hope it doesn't take anything more. It takes a constant name. So another reason for the compiler to yell at me, because I am not going to follow its uh its dumb little rules. But, um, yeah, and then we'll go, yeah, nothing there. So, WL struct WL seats listener seat list and then dot capabilities equals cap dot name equals name ah oh, that is some cap especially when I don't need semicolons all right there we have um that is our seat listener we'll make sure to add this to 
the seed itself. And then we'll have to clean up. We'll get rid of our seat. Let's go up here. Since there's uh there's one other thing we'll need to uh get rid of. So devil seat release seats. Damn. I should have saw that coming. Don't use a mouse with the neogram. And that is expected. So now we can um, get our keyboard. So I, um, I just copy and paste this from, from some other code that I wrote because there are six keyboard functions that we need to give to the listener and you don't want to watch me fucking uh, fumble through that for five minutes so here we have we have the keyboard map which uh, basically just tells us um, what keyboard map we're using uh, our enter when we press um, I, th I think when we enter text or whatever I don't know leave key this is the important one key Key and mod are probably the two important ones you'll use. So this tells us um, when keys are pressed and uh, unpressed. And this tells us when mod keys are, um, and just the general state of mod, modifier keys. But uh, usually you'll want to use some other library, pretty much just XKB uh, common, uh, the X keyboard, which isn't officially part of xorg anymore i think it's kind of split off to its own thing but uh this is pretty much designed to work with xkb uh, that's just like the standard keyboard library for linux but um yeah let's uh before i forget let's just make sure we clean our keyboard up so we'll say if keyboard and then Debrel keyboard destroy and let's um let's just have this print out whatever scan code we send it. So each key has its own scan code. And this is different from like ASCII two where like like an ASCII two capital A has a different uh value than lowercase a. But when it comes to keyboards, they're the same key. And that's what scan codes look for. So we'll just give it an unsigned int for our key. So now if I compile this and then I'll run it. So now whenever I press a key, as you can see, there is our scan code. So here are the arrow keys, this is WASD, uh, escape is one, one is two. So these are the numbers, these are the regular alphabets. So let's, let's say if we want to, um, when we press A, it prints A. So A is 30. So let's just say if key equals 30 printf wow my uh my fans are blowing what's uh what's the uh what, what are we running at i can't fucking see that <coughs> ah fuck it this is too small I do. There we go. I think that's what I had it at. All right, print A.
and if we have d so else if key equals equals 32 printf d so now if i compile and run this whenever i press a or unpress a we get an a and whenever i press or unpress d we get a d and other keys don't matter but um yeah that's how you manually uh use scan codes so um yeah i think inputs are extremely straightforward when it comes to uh wayland um and usually i like to like um what i usually like to do is set the escape key to a close function since that's what I'm used to so if key equals one close equals one so now if we run this and then I press escape close and uh, yeah that's uh that's inputs for Wayland and um yeah that's really all you need to make a fully functioning Wayland client uh so much cleaner than x uh the x org documentation is just horrible wayland is just it's i i really like it. it's just a very clean and simple library and uh i think linux definitely needed a modern uh a modern display protocol so yeah that's a uh, zero to window with wayland